my name's Rachel, I'm from Portsmouth University, and my talk today is just it's, it's um, just an overview of a project I've done with students that was inspired by the last COP. So one of the points of this the, the talk really is to, to recognise the value of an event like this, because you can't really anticipate maybe some of the positive, unexpected consequences of um, the serendipity. I just happened to be sat next to somebody who happened to be reading a book. Um, so it's partly a thank you, and also then passing on some of the things that I've learned from running a project with students. So the project was um, uh, with MA Spatial Design students, and it was called Hope Punk in the City for What Is to What If. Um, so just to introduce myself, um, I'm from, as I said, Portsmouth School of Architecture. I teach undergraduate interior architecture and postgraduate interior architecture. I've also been a secondary school art design teacher. I've been an architectural designer. Um, more, more recently, I've done an MA in illustration. So I'm really, I'm also an artist. And a lot of my work is about um, kind of um, social justice, environmental issues, and historic um, environmental narratives. So this is just a section of a work that's probably twice, twice the length of this. If you're interested in the artwork, there's a little part here where you can look up. You can look it up, but it's, the talk isn't about that. But it's just to give you a sense of who I am and how it informs my teaching. So the last COP, oh, this is just kind of what I'll cover. How the last COP really informed what I've done with the students. Talk to you about the project and the student, really importantly, the student responses and how they valued what we did, and then how this might feed back into what other people choose to do. And I think there'll be time for some questions and answers, and I've got some of the student work on the table over there as well, if you'd like to look at it. So I don't know, um, do any of you, have many of you familiar with this book? I mean, it might, you are, <laughs> my sister is. <laughs> so some of you, some nods there. So um, I, I might just play a short video from Rob Hopkins, that it talks about imagining the future. Um, and it was, I sat next to, I think her name is Bridget, she's from Bridgeport, I might, she might be a counsellor, hopefully she's not in the room because I've forgotten her second name. But she was reading this book and she just really recommended it because I'm teaching, but because it's really about how we enhance the power of imagination. So I'm gonna do my best to play, it doesn't always work, the technology, but let's just see. Uh... This is my apartment. I wake up here and get my kids up ready for school. Come on, kids! These apartments were built 14 years ago with straw bale walls and using local materials. They're incredibly energy efficient. And the composting toilets in the basement mean that we now use a fraction of the water that we used to use in 2019. The streets are quiet due to sparse motorised traffic and lined with fruit and nut trees. There are food gardens everywhere and the air smells like spring. I drop my kids at school. Bye kids, see you later. School is now very different from 15 years ago. Testing was eliminated, play is encouraged, and the great reskilling means that kids can now turn their hands to pretty much anything. I call in to buy bread at my favorite bakery. This place was set up in 2022 as part of a citywide holistic mental health strategy based on the idea that baking is the new Prozac. I pass former supermarkets now repurposed as a flourishing mix of local enterprises. Many of the enterprises here are run by people who arrived during the time of the great migrations and they were now so fully integrated it's really hard to remember life before they came. I walk down streets full of children playing, neighbours in conversation, people growing food everywhere. I visit a meeting run by our municipality's civic imagination office which has transformed local democracy and what feels possible to us as citizens of this place. As the day draws to a close, I notice that hooting of owls and the swooping of the bats, just two of the indicators that the biodiversity of this place is really starting to bounce back. Premises is if you can't if you can't imagine the future you want you're not going to get there and he talks a lot about play and imagination concepts of joy and how these are really essential for young people but for everyone actually if we're going to imagine this 
future that we want and work towards it. So that was the first thing that I kind of, it was really chimed with the kind of things I tried to do with students. Um, this is a review of the book. So how could we create another world, one in which human beings live in harmony with each other and with nature, um, principally, if we're not able to imagine it first? Um, so the, the concepts of ploy, play, imagination, joy, really fundamental. They're things I try and do with students. And alongside this are concepts that are drawn from new material, new materialism and mindfulness. So if you were in the first talk, there are lots of references to James Bennett and to Karen Barrard. Some of you might know those concepts. But really, uh, it's simply put, it's kind of about attunement, how we relate to our spaces and other planetary beings, recognising ourselves as part of a whole rather than a dominant, separate individual species. And this idea of interaction, so we are interacting but also, yes, so tangibly and seeing the algorithm. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Yeah, thank you. Pardon? I hadn't heard of it. Before. Oh, if you haven't heard, this is a great. Um, that's a great introduction. This idea of vibrant matter. Come and look. Cheers. Yeah, and it's it's accessible, but it it also sits long. <laughs> this idea is it's actually got a lot in common with kind of Buddhist thinking and lots of the texts that uh, Kevan was talking about earlier. But there's this idea that we are not, we are connected, we can't think of ourselves as separate any longer, that it's clearly failing. So the, these things are very complementary. Um, Rob Hopkins' book, these theories that come from new materialism, and in Rob Hopkins' book also, I love this phrase called Hope Punk, which was coined by Alexandra Rowland, who is a writer of fiction, comic book uh, fiction. So she talks about how Hope Punk is resistance, rebellion, resilience, as counters to apathy and uh, cynicism, which I'm sure we can all understand. We, we feel that what can we do? What can we do in this, this context? So resistance, rebellion, resilient, clearly drawing on the original punk movement. So the quote from Vivian Westwood, I think it was really interesting for me to read that again, because I was kind of growing up in the punk era. But yes, this is what, this is what was happening. It is a call to arms. It is about resistance not with violence, but with energy, with, um, in this case, with kind of real sense of joy and hope. Hope is key in all of this, I think. And then the other thing also uh, at the last COP is I sat on the table and I picked up this postcard that had Michael, I think it was the Dorset COP, had written these, this hopeful pledge inspired by Michael Dower. So these pledges of how we choose, we think about how we impact the world, we think about how we impact other people. We take an active role, so try and resist that apathy. We're, you know, we're all here today, which is amazing. I think this whole event is fantastic. But also demand things from our leadership. So these were all things I kind of took into the studio, back, back to the studio, back to our students. Um, along with other texts, books, things I've been reading, things that have inspired me, some from fiction, Barbara King Solver, I don't know if you're in, any of you know her books, but really rooted in the environment, but approached through fiction. And she writes essays as well. Olivia Lang, really important author for me because she's writing about art, and I'm also very interested in that. Robert Pat Hours is also a fiction writer. More recently, uh, well, actually, my sister is here, put me onto this, the kind of podcast, which is about. Um, uh, Plum Village and just the, the kind of mindfulness and all of sharing all of these same values. So this um, Rebecca Solnit also is another writer I, I've read quite a lot about. So this idea that act, activism can generate hope. Joy doesn't betray but sustains activism. Um, and when you face a politics that aspires to make you feel fearful, alienated and isolated, Joy is a fine initial act of insurrection. And I think that is a really powerful thing to share with everybody, but with young people. So in the studio, this is an MA student. Uh, it's an MA interior architecture studio, but it's also got spatial practice. Um, the students come from different backgrounds, engineering, um, landscape architecture, graphic design, and interiors and architecture. But Importantly, they come from all over the world, including some really troubled places, Lebanon, Iran, Syria. And it, honestly, it's a gift when you teach a, a group of young people like that who come from all over the world with their different talents, their different beliefs, their different um, energies, 
but wanting to work together. So they came to this concept that they were creative clans. They wanted to work in groups. They called themselves creative clans. There was this wonderful um, spirit of collaboration and supporting. And so I, I, I took them through some of these things I've already talked about, but one of the things Rob Hopkins has done at conferences where he's talked to big groups of people is an exercise which I thought I could do, but then I decided not to because what we did with the students is take time to make sure they felt safe and they, make, they had a sense of trust in us because I think it's not something you can just bring on people, myself. I think you need to have that sense of safety first, but I will share with you the process. So they stood in a line, they closed their eyes, they imagined stepping into 2050 and imagining the future they would like to see. And it was, I mean, it was, they found, they, they reported that they, they really enjoyed that, but some of them also found it very moving because they have families in Iran, they have families in Syria and Afghanistan. So they were also coming to our university feeling powerless, feeling powerless, I think that's the word really, that they didn't have agency to reflect change. But this is where we began, and, and we also wrote hopeful pledges. So a bit like Michael Dow's hopeful pledges, they, in their clans, they wrote their pledge for the project, but looking beyond that, how they would take these pledges into practice, which is really challenging. You know, the architectural design practice can be a very difficult one to think of in terms of feminist practices, but also sustainable practices, but we have to, we have to teach it, and they have to take it, those, um, beliefs out there um, and make those changes we need to see. And I believe they will, they, they, they are amazing. So the project itself, what they had to do is design a site of exchange, a small structure, to engage and activate forlorn spaces. So in most cities we see these pockets of spaces that are underused, forgotten, but have a rich with potential, rich with opportunity. Um, if in, the, in Portsmouth next year it will be in the Isle of Wight. And the idea is it would address a particular social or global issue. So when they were stepping into 2050, they were imagining the future they want, and that told them the issue they were concerned about, which wasn't always climate action. Sometimes it might be feminism, it might be gender and identity, sexuality. There are all sorts of themes and issues that they covered. Um, and these were some examples of perhaps projects that are already out there. Um, some of them are about uh, a place to deposit things. One of them was called Pea Soup, and it was about serving soup for an hour a day um, in the city. And another one was this playful structure, well, not as so much as children, but a place where people could talk and meet and share ideas. So that they were just some references for them. So playful processes, so we really encourage them. Obviously, I've got an arts background as well as a, a design background and artist books, any of you know about artist books as a, a kind of practice? They are by definition spatial, and um, the first speaker was talking about the spatial quality of theory, so they were reading Jane Bennett and Karen Barard, which are quite challenging texts at first, so they just have a paragraph, sit with that paragraph, and then make something in response to it, but also go to the site. So at the site, there's, um, it's collecting materials, noticing colors and objects, and starting to recognise, use this word attunement, how they had a sense of being in the space, not just photographing it, listening to it, feeling it, smelling it, collecting it, drawing it, and back in the studio, making these assemblages with colour and words, but also, as I say, making these artist books as well. Um, yeah, so, I'm not just looking, yeah, so they kind of, in the studio, so if the site was about collecting, noticing, observing, back in the studio, it was about making, sharing, and then using these as starting points for ideas, as well as the hopeful pledges, as well as the political or social issue that really interested them. And also looking at the work of others again, that encourage interaction and playfulness, particularly with adults, because this idea of joy and play is so important. So I thought I'd just show you two of the projects. Um, what the students did was create these zines or magazines. I've got that wrong way around. That's cool. Yeah. So you'll see on the table over there, if you want to have a look at them, I'll leave them for a little while. So these newspapers document their research and their theories and writing, but also their design ideas. <clears throat> and the aim wasn't to come up necessarily with a completely 
a complete architectural set of drawings, plans, sections, which is what we do with undergraduate students. It's more about the thinking, the process, the experiments. And at this one, I'll just read what they said their aims were. This is my whole life as a tutor. Where are my glasses? <laughs> so, okay, I've got them. So they said, Hope Park in the city, in this case, all about hoping for a more open society where we can all interact, play and connect in the daily life. Our motivation for being able to play comes from within and comes from the trust in our relationship. The ability to act is often explained as agency in new materials thinking. Assemblage is identified as an everlasting mix of things that once together get accepted as objects. All the objects have an effect on one another, working as, working as a union in unity. If we take one thing away, the objects, the entire object as a whole will change. The aim for this project is to engage the spectators and invite them to become part of the assemblage. How could it be that it's often easier for us to connect with the natural world? We might question that rather than with each other. They were, they were really responding to loneliness and isolation and uh, refugees in Portsmouth, maybe feeling that dislocation. Our plan was inspired by a deep connection people have with nature at the area around Square Tower in Portsmouth. We questioned the barriers that separate us and wondered how the design could bridge these gaps, fostering a sense of unity amongst the community. And I like, they, they, they were noticing these waste materials on the site. They just picked up a piece of rope and with people who were just passing by on the beach, they were really brave. They said, will you play with the rope with us? Let's play with the rope. And so they, they started to um, conjure this idea of games and rope having the potential to connect people physically through play um, and to occupy the space with some of the waste most materials in a more constructive way. And I, I really love the way they even think about a dog playing. It's got a dog form on the end of a piece of string. So it's quite an abstract proposal, um, but the spirit is there, I think, the understanding of what they're trying to achieve. And then the second project, um, I'm really cutting, I'm, I'm doing their work a disservice really because I'm, I'm doing it so quickly. Then the second one says, as part of the Core, core X response collaboration, so they were interested in this idea of communication, <clears throat> their project response is dedicated to the design of community built pavilions as a unified response to the urgent climate crisis. Drawing inspiration from the resilience of lichens as bio indicators of atmospheric pollution, our pavilions serve as tangible embodiments of hope, resilience, and interconnectedness amongst the daunting environmental threats. So um, what they were doing is taking this derelict space in Portsmouth here actually, and thinking about, they, they made their own mycelium bricks and uh, structures. So they actually were growing materials, thinking about sustainability of materials and using mycelium as a building product, but also the power of lichen as well as, the, as they described here. And the idea is the community would gradually build the structures over time and they would determine how they would be used, whether for uh, conversation, maybe it's like the, the green book reading club that Kevan was talking about earlier. Um, so this kind of community, the community taking over the space and then giving them the resources to build these structures. So you can have a look at these. There's, there's several more projects on the table as well. Um, so as I say, I'm giving them, giving them a slight disservice because it is so brief, but nonetheless. So the other things happened, so the things they've made, so they did make these artist books. This was particularly, I mean, a lot of them are really kind of thoughtful and sensitive, but this one was made from a student from Iran who was really fearful for her parents. She didn't feel she could go back to the country herself um, because of safety issues. And she took, she took this concept of hope Hope is an act of resistance. And then she worked with that. She wrote this, I mean, it's anonymized, so hopefully it's okay to read it. But she says, um, well, no, it's to you. Dear my unknown friend, as I sit down to write this letter, I'm reminded of the countless hearts beating across the vast world of ours. Each one carrying its own hopes, dreams, and struggles. Though we may be strangers, separated by distances and differences, we are bound by something profound, our shared humanity. In this vast world, amidst its chaos and challenges, hold on to hope with all your strength. 
I want you to know that you are not alone and there are hands reaching out to hold yours. Hearts beating in sync with yours and voice whispering words of encouragement just for you. You are part of a tapestry of humanity, each thread contributing to the beauty and strength of the whole. In the meantime, please take care of yourself. Remember to be kind to yourself, to give yourself the grace and compassion you deserve and know that there are people out there myself included, who are rooting for you every step of the way. I may not know you personally, but I believe in you wholeheartedly. Keep holding on to hope, dear friend. Your brightest days are yet to come. And <laughs> I don't, do any of you teach? Do I have any of you educators? Yeah. I mean, when you, these are like treasures, aren't they? When you're marking work and you kind of, you read everything, you look carefully at everything, and you find that I found this tucked in this little pocket at the back of the artist's book. And you think, because something's happened here, something has meant something to this young woman. So that, I mean, there were, there were lots of these, some more of the artist's books on the, on the table. I'll just take a look. So the other thing we've done is exhibit the work um, in Portsmouth, in Winchester, some of the works here today. And that was a real moment of pride for the students, particularly there was the artist book fair in London, which is called Into the Fold. And people were wanting to buy the work and the students, some of them did choose to sell it, some of them chose to keep it, yeah. Thank you, It's <laughs> my 10 minute warning. Um, so it's, it, that's been wonderful. And then I'm going to, this is a slide full of words. But again, for those of you particularly who teach, when you read feedback like this, it doesn't, it doesn't happen often. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get this kind of level of that the students, it's about agency, it's about ownership of learning, it's about them having felt something important happen that might change who they are and how they want to be in the world. So I won't read them all out, but I've, I'll just read this one. So <coughs> Hope Punk is not just about naive op optimism. It is deeply political and radical engaging with issues of social justice, environmentalism, and human rights. It asserts that caring fiercely and loving bravely are powerful acts of rebellion in a world that often values detachment and power. Hope Punk encourages us to believe that a better world is possible and that everyone have a, has a role in building it. And I think that the other sense of agency for me was really important that they, they immerse themselves in all of this. Some of it's really challenging, but they felt they had a power that they maybe didn't have before. And I think this is, um, and maybe another one, I'll cherish all the things I've learned and aspire to the optimi optimism I've achieved from this module. Because she talks about how she was feeling, I don't know whether I've got it there, but how she was feeling powerless and overwhelmed. So, yeah, so I, I just want to say to really thank you to the COP last year for it's sort of tapping into something that was there, but it was giving me the resources to really develop a, a programme for the students. And I've talked particularly about postgraduate students, but the undergraduate students were also addressing some of those things and have got projects like Seascape, it's about protecting the oceans, another one about weaving culture, about instead of this the vision between people, how we connect people. Another one is about, um, trying to think what's over there, about fashion, sustainable fashion. So yes, it was a good year. <laughs> it was a good year in our studio. And I hope, you know, we're gonna build on some of these things. And uh, yeah, hopefully with the students, the, the experienced students supporting the less experienced students. So yeah, that's, um, that's my talk. <laughs> I don't know if you, yeah, um, any questions or? Thank you to the COP, first of all, but yes. Um, how do you, do you know about um, Be More Pirate? No, but it's a book. Does anyone know about Be More Pirate? I need to write this down. No, it's a book, I can't remember who it's by, but it's kind of on the way to anti-capitalist business models. Oh, and Hope Play feels really important to, to join in with that, because my my memory of Be More Pirate, because at, at the end there's a sort of, um, uh, what do you call it? A kind of manifesto for businesses to use themselves. They want to use it in other business. Um, but Hope Punk feels really important as the goal, as kind of, but where is that heading to? Because being more pirate and kind of anti capitalist business, um, and this is all well and good, I mean, it is, um, but it's like to what end? And here's an end. Yeah, so okay, it's, that's a brilliant. Along those lines, of you. you don't know 
where to push to without if you're not seeing it. If you can't see exactly, if you can't imagine it exactly. you want. So we've been using those kind yeah. of um, much well, more flexible approaches, the less that's exploitative, yeah. But stuff. now yeah. we can see yeah. exactly where we're aiming for, and yeah. um, and I think that will that will push be more pirate a bit further as well yeah. then. Oh, the, fantastic! Yeah, yeah that's on the underwear. But yeah, have a look. Yeah, um, I will do. And here's a video that I tried to show you. Mm -hmm. um, does um, it, 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 it? He is imagining the future once, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of a nice way to start with the students' trial. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was really okay. great. Um, being an educator as well, um, how do you reconcile what they were doing in this module? with what they had to do to get their master's degree? Yeah, this fitted, it fitted with the criteria. So we, one of the things for that module is um, challenging the conventions of architectural drawing because it's so rooted in, um, I mean, we might say more feminist practices, but more accessible practices. So you're drawing and communicating in a way that's more, maybe more accessible to more people and that it's interactive. You don't feel like, it's a drawing you can't read, you can't touch it. You can play with these things, you can add to it. You can. So that was one dimension of it. The other is that they're positioning themselves for practice. So the idea that they have a, a kind of um, a sense of this, it's almost like the pledges, but they start to say, okay, what kind of practitioner do I want to be? How do I get there? How do I, what do I understand to be my values? Um, and how do I enact those? Which is really difficult. Mm -hmm. So this was helping them navigate some of those things. But also for me, it was more, it was what's really important about it is a sense of citizenship and given the places in the world they come from, a sense of a place of safety to express. Some of them would say, we've never been able to express our opinion in this way before. Mm -hmm. So it's a first and that is needs holding, you know, they need, mm -hmm. um, it, you absolutely need that place of safety, but that's, you're trying to engender a sense of agency but also for all of them, you are a citizen of the world beyond being a designer, architect, engineer. How do you want to, what kind of future? If you imagine yourself in 30 years, what type of citizen do you want to have been and to be? So it's that as well. Yeah. And did you do that reconciliation for them or did you, did they take part in doing oh, it? Oh, they took part in it, yeah. I mean, they were writing it and reflecting on it and... Because they had the criteria that they needed to be... That's right, yeah. Thing. Yeah, so that reflective engagement is a really important part yeah. of what we assess. But it's hard to balance all those things. But I think what we did quite well, because especially more with undergraduate, there's a kind of, a, quite understandably, it's mark-oriented mm -hmm. and it takes a while to through first year, second year, third year, mm. to go from the mark to being in the process. And in, in, with the MA students, I find you can go a bit further with the process. Yeah, so that helps as well. It, it's inspiring because, of, yeah, um, with one of my hats on, I, I tried to promote that. Oh, okay, um, yeah. So it's really refreshing to see that you are participating in taking that forward with them and still adhering to the criteria. Yeah. Because so many people just get stuck on the criteria yeah. and don't give that freedom so this this is just lovely thank yeah you. oh thank you that's yeah. really lovely feedback and we do have you know the marking matrix course, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And we take it into the studio and say look do you yeah. remember this is what we're going to yeah. marking but it is i do that one so i don't want to do over yeah that, make that focus that's, yeah but at least you you're showing this is still possible yeah just lovely thank you oh, thanks yes, thank yeah. you any other questions or i guess it's probably time up isn't it well but thank you for listening i'll leave these things on the table over there so if anyone wants to have a look you're welcome to be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.